Alright, so here goes my attempt at making a simple planes guide that is not 30 minutes long. <laughs> so... Imagine this, you've just spent 16-22 minutes on building your absolutely beautiful first aircraft. Nice. You've test flown it, you've tried it out, nothing goes wrong, and you decide, hell yeah, I'm gonna share my beautiful creation with the rest of the Simple Plane community. So you go on, you make some absolutely masterful screenshots. Bruh. You add an amazing description and you send it on its way to the Simple Plane's website. And once you're there, you kind of start checking out other people's stuff and you come across this random re- And he's built this nice fighter jet. And then you go over and you look at the description and oh, there it is. This guy's made an afterburner. But how? Yeah, no, uh, on with the video. Okay, so let's be serious for a second. You actually want to build an afterburner that's like this. An afterburner that has a spicy hot hot flame, that engages past 95% throttle, and that also has at least somewhat realistic fuel consumption. In order to get started on building this afterburner, you'll of course first need an aircraft to put this afterburner onto. And therefore, I present you with this. Yeah, there's a very good chance that most people won't uh, won't get that joke. <laughs> like most things in Simple Planes, afterburners have a couple of parts and a couple of steps to them. The first one of which is placing your primary engine at the back of your jet. I personally always use the Blasto J15, not only because it's very light, but also because this jet engine is very fuel efficient, which is nice if we want to give our aircraft quite a bit of range in cruising mode. That said, you should of course feel completely free to use whatever engine you feel most comfortable with. After we've put our primary engine in the place that we want it to be, we can go on and change some parameters using the overload mod. First of all, I personally always disable the exhaust. We can do this by setting the exhaust scale on every axis to zero, like I did here. I do this because real aircraft also don't have an exhaust flame when their afterburner isn't engaged. What I also change is I change the power multiplier. In doing so, we change the power output of the engine, meaning we can change the top speed of our aircraft. I personally always try to aim for about 800 kilometers in terms of top speed for my aircraft without the afterburner. Okay, now let's move on to building the actual afterburner for our engine. To do this, we'll first need another engine. In this case, I'm going to use the Bethe 150 Blasto B B F the Blasto BFE 150. Personally, I like to use this engine because not only does it sound a lot more like an afterburning engine, it also has a fuel consumption closer to that of an engine using an afterburner. Now, I do a couple of things here with overload. First of all, I disable all mass, all interaction, and all drag on this part. Reason being is this part will purely be there for audio and for the actual speed boost, but it won't be there to act as a physics object this way. After doing this, the big step comes to finally make this engine function as an afterburner. What we do is we go to the input controller tab, where we then find the input bar, and here we type in throttle, and then a larger than sign, and then we put a value there, which is basically the throttle percentage at which you want the engine to start engaging. In this case, I put 0 0.96, which means that over 95%, the engine will automatically engage, which means that over 95% of our throttle will turn on the afterburner. Okay, so now we're left with an engine that has an afterburner, that has a sound that also kind of sounds like an afterburner, and it also has at least somewhat realistic fuel consumption. But if we go onto the internet and we type in, for example, F-16 afterburner, you'll find a bunch of pictures with, of course, this aircraft and a flame behind it. So let's go make a flame like that. To do this, we'll need our third and final engine, which will be the VTOL jet engine. Once again, we'll disable all physical properties and we'll also put the input to be throttle is larger than 0 0.96. 
What we'll also do is we'll put the engine's power multiplier on zero. This means that in the end, the exhaust coming out of this engine will be nothing other than visual. Then we proceed to place two VTOL nozzles. I personally like to use two because then we can layer two different colors on top of one another, which is kind of a bit more like afterburners in real life, where the end is a bit more white pinkish and the beginning is a lot more fire-like. When you're placing your VTOL nozzles, please make sure that they're on the same X and Y axis. Sometimes they're not actually perfectly aligned. And also make sure that you disable the maximum and the minimum input for the VTOL swivel ability so that your flame doesn't keep moving about when you're just flying around. If you spawn your aircraft in right now, you'll notice that the exhaust flame from the VTOL nozzles is still very small. To fix this, what we can do is we go into the overload menu again, and then we go to engine thrust port, and we find the exhaust scale tab at the top. And by changing these numbers here, this series of three ones, we can change the scale of our exhaust flame. If you'd like to make your exhaust flame longer, you can just change the last value to a higher value, because that last value is the length of your exhaust flame in the Z axis. Now you'll notice that this aircraft still has the original orange default color as its exhaust color. And we don't want that. As we said before, we kind of want a more spicy color. So let's go change that. If we go onto Google and type in hex color, Google automatically opens up its built-in hex color generator. Here, we can basically create any color we like using the built-in slider, but also the gradient tool. And that automatically generates the hex color code. We can copy this hex color code and then paste it into our exhaust color in simple planes to then change the color of our exhaust flame. Of course, I have two exhaust nozzles and because I want to achieve a more realistic look, I'm going to give the second exhaust a more orangey slash flamey color. And boom, well done, you did it. You just made an afterburner. The only step that now remains is just to put all your VTOL nozzles and the VTOL engine into the fuselage and there you go, there's your very own realistic looking afterburner. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that concludes this tutorial on how to make your custom afterburner. I hope you found it useful and until next time, fly safe.